Welcome back. Uh, welcome again to my science lab. I am Pastor Hannah. I am the next gen pastor at Emmanuel. Uh, and we are in our Easter science series right now. So as we're making our way towards um, Easter, we are looking at different science experiments and we're doing them here together. And uh, we're seeing how they relate to the biblical story of Easter. Well, I guess I see that we will be using eggs in our Easter experiment today. Uh, and we used um, some eggs last week as well, if you recall. So I guess we'll, we'll see what we're up to for today. Okay, our experiment is called the trust experiment. <laughs> Any guesses what the word of the week is? Trust, absolutely. Huh, all right. Well, I can't say I'm super thrilled about what comes next. <laughs> I did read the instructions thoroughly. Have you ever dropped an egg on the floor? Hands up if you have. Or maybe you were trying to crack it to put the yolk and egg stuffy stuff from the egg in a bowl or whatever, and you missed and it, ugh. They're slimy. Okay, so according to the instructions, eggshells are stronger than you might realize. I don't know about you, but I do not think of an eggshell as being very strong. Like, I feel like I accidentally crumple them up all the time. <laughs> but according to this experiment, they can withstand a lot of force. So it says if I just put it in the palm of my hand and wrap my fingers around it, leaving my thumb out, <laughs> according to the instructions, I can um, squeeze as hard as I possibly can and I will not be able to crack this egg. Um, <laughs> there's no cloth or anything uh, here with the supplies of simply raw eggs. Uh, anyway, I feel a little scared. I don't want to make a mess of myself. So let's see. Okay. <laughs> oh man. I thought I'd be more confident in this. Okay. Wrap in the palm, wrap the fingers around, squeeze as hard as I can. Oh my gosh. I literally am squeezing as hard as I can. Can you even see my fingernails are turning purple? Um, like, that is as hard <laughs> as I can. Oh my goodness. Okay, apparently, next step is you can actually intertwine your fingers um, and between your two palms. Holy cow, it's not broken, it's breaking. Oh, it's true, okay. I really had no trust in this experiment <laughs> at all. But it is true. Um, that egg it will not break, huh? Okay. Well, <laughs> maybe that's why the word of the week is trust. Um, uh, yeah, okay, well, eggs aside, do you remember the Bible verse? <laughs> I'm like distracted by that, that was really cool. <laughs> uh, the Bible verse for this series is found in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And it says, Anyone who believes in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. And so we are using this Bible verse to remind ourselves that the, these words are true because of what happened at Easter. God's gift to us is new life uh, and eternal, new and eternal life. Um, okay, how many of you would have been brave enough to give that a try? Hands up if you would have. Well, if you are with me in uh, Sunday in person today, we are going to try it in just a moment. If you're home, go ahead and ask your parents if you can have an egg and give it a try. Um, there's another really cool egg experiment that I came across. 
where you really have to put your trust in how strong these eggshells are. Uh, and I just have a very short clip for us to watch. I don't know if your parents will let you have a few dozen eggs, but if they do, let's see if you're willing to give this a try. Well, that video was compliments of Steve Spangler science. He's got some really, really interesting stuff on there. Uh, so yeah, hands up if you would be willing to give that a shot. My goodness, <laughs> I don't know if I am. I suppose if I'm outside with bare feet, it wouldn't be so bad. Well, one of the most frustrating things about fear is how hard it is to get over a fear. I mean, it's one thing I may feel fearful to get egg goo on me, but it's not that hard to overcome. I can talk myself into it. Even if I get messy, it'll be okay. I can overcome my fear of crushing an egg. <laughs> and actually I wasn't even successful at doing that. But think about something like the fear of flying. I mean, that can be really, really challenging to overcome. Even if you learn about the statistics, uh, how air travel is actually much safer than even driving in a car. Uh, some people have to take medication or try counseling to overcome the fear of flying. Well, fear um, doesn't just keep us from getting on an airplane or falling asleep in the dark or experiencing how cool it is to pet a snake. Um, fear can also keep us from standing up for our belief in God. Well, today we continue to look at the Easter story. Um, we're gonna see how fear gets the best of one of Jesus's closest friends. On the night when Jesus was arrested, Jesus told his disciples all about uh, what was about to happen, uh, what was coming next for him to be arrested, his crucifixion and, and that sort of stuff. He also told them that they were going to be afraid and they were going to run and hide, uh, that even his closest friend Peter was gonna pretend that he didn't know him. Now, this is the exact same Peter who showed no fear and showed complete trust when he walked on water with Jesus. How cool was that? But now we're about to see where fear gets the best of Peter suddenly. So let's watch that in a video from Crossroads Kids Club, and it's based on the passage from Mark 14, 66 to 72. God's story. Peter denies Jesus. So remember how part of God's story is about a guy named Peter who walked on water with Jesus? Well, it goes like this. Peter followed Jesus, but like all of us, he wasn't perfect. Sometimes he messed up. One time, he even pretended not to know Jesus at all. Here's what happened. Jesus and his 12 disciples were going to different towns, showing more and more people that Jesus is God's son. But some people did not believe Jesus is God's son. They thought that was impossible. And they got so mad that Jesus said he was God's son that they tried to have him arrested, even killed. Turns out, Jesus had to die to rescue us. See, he was perfect, yet chose to come to our broken world and live and die just like us. But then he came back to life, which means Jesus really was sent from God and really is stronger than death. So now, even though we all mess up, we can follow Jesus and one day live with him forever. But at the time, Peter and the other disciples couldn't have known all that. They believed Jesus was God's son, but they didn't know how he would rescue us. One night, Jesus did get arrested. Peter and the disciples were sad and scared. 
and they could get into trouble too, just for following him. So when a servant girl recognized Peter and said, this man was with Jesus, Peter said, I don't know him. Then someone else called Peter a follower of Jesus and he said, I am not. A third person said Peter knew Jesus and Peter said, I don't know what you're talking about. Right then, a rooster crowed and Peter realized what he had done. In fact, Jesus had told Peter that he was going to deny him three times before the rooster crowed. But guess what? That means Jesus knew Peter would mess up before he even did anything. And Jesus loved him anyway. The best part is, he feels the same way about us. Peter would keep on following Jesus and show many more people how to follow Jesus. And we can too. And that's part of the story of Peter. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Peter messed up. People arrested Jesus. Peter pretended he didn't know Jesus. He did it again. He did it a third time. The rooster crowed. Jesus still loved Peter. We mess up too. Jesus still loves us. Peter followed Jesus. We can follow Jesus too. And that's a part of God's story. Can you imagine how Peter was feeling the moment the rooster crowed? He had failed. Everything Jesus said did happen. Fear got the best of him, just as Jesus said it would. Well, he loved Jesus more than anything, and he had witnessed the miracles that Jesus performed. Peter even had so much trust that he walked on water. How could Peter give up his trust so easily all of a sudden? Well, what then does our egg experiment and our word of the week and this Bible story have in common? Well, although I feared uh, getting messy from this egg experiment that the shell wouldn't hold up as they said it would, uh, I still, I guess, trusted in it enough to give it a shot, didn't I? And turns out it was true. The shell didn't break. Our Bible passage was about how we can sometimes have fear, like Peter had fear, but Jesus is always true. He really is who he says he is. Thankfully, he is forgiving and forgave Peter for his lack of trust there. And so our word of the week is trust, trust in Jesus. He is the Messiah. He is the one who was sent to save the world. And that's what we want to remember right now as we celebrate Easter. He came to give us eternal life. Now, uh, what fears do we have about our faith? Peter feared showing faith in Jesus because he feared that it would get him in trouble. Do we worry about letting people know that we are a Christian? Are we afraid to let people know that uh, we love Jesus? Whenever you feel afraid, I want you to remember the story of Peter. Remember the courage he had to walk on the water? Um, that later than he had fear, he lacked trust, but in the end, he asked for forgiveness. Jesus forgave him, and Peter went on to tell many, 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 many people about the great love of Jesus. Did you know, this is a cool fact, the phrase, fear not, is written 365 times in the Bible. That's once for every day of the year. I guess Jesus really wants us to have no fear each and every day. So instead, let's put our trust in him. So today's discussion question is, is there anything you're afraid to do?
God, thank you that we can read through the passages in the Bible uh, and figure out how they could have meaning to our everyday life. God, there are certainly times when um, it may seem hard to trust in you, trust that uh, you are who you say you are, uh, that Jesus really did um, die for us and rose again. Um, but God, thank you also that when we have fear and we lack trust, you forgive us just like you did Peter. So God, forgive us for the times that we are short on faith, short on trusting you. God, and give us the courage to turn that around and stand up for you. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, join us again next week. We have another experiment, and we're going to see how it fits into the, um, the week's and time leading up to Easter. Bye.